In this episode of Fictional Hangover, we talk about science, magic, and a shark in our discussion of Nimona by Noelle Stevenson. Hey everybody! Welcome to Fictional Hangover, a podcast about young adult and new adult books, series, authors, and voice actors that is full of spoilers. I'm Amanda. And I'm Claire. This is Bird. This is Bird. Hello, Bird. <laughs> Bird, Bird has joined us again this week. <laughs> oh, Bird. And I'm Claire, and today we're going to discuss Nimona by Noelle Stevenson. Standard Sorry, disclaimer, rage. Bird will join rage us every is... week now. He is our yes. mascot. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Standard disclaimer, if you haven't read this book, please remember that Fictional Hangover is all about spoilers. If you haven't read or listened and don't want to be spoiled, stop listening to us and go read or listen to the book. Then come back. If you haven't done this but want to pretend that you have, or if you don't care about spoilers, or if you just like the show so much that you don't care about any of that, then listen up. Yay. I feel like I need to go ahead... And add in right now. Yep, caveat this episode. (sighs) Lots of caveats. My personal caveat with this one is this is the last episode recorded in the noisiest apartment in the universe. So I'm really hopeful that the next one will be much quieter and it won't be echoey and there won't be sirens and dump trucks and loud cars driving by <sighs> my fingers are crossed so everything are birds. is crossed everything is crossed <laughs> oh we, we we won't know what's going on if we are not interrupted by some loud noise I know. I don't know how I'll be able to handle it. Might need to like set some alarms and stuff to go off just to to have those periodic interruptions. I might need to. I might yeah. need to. It might be better. I don't know. I don't know. It's hard to say. <laughs> Something else with this episode. We're recording it farther in advance than we normally do on account of me having moved across the United States. Which now I'm speaking in a conditional future tense because we're recording before the episode comes out, but speaking as if the episode were already out. It hasn't happened yet, but it will have happened now. Yes. Right. It's a weird Doctor Who timey-wimey wibbly-wobbly kind of thing that's going to go on. It is. It is indeed. So, yeah... No, no, would you rather statistics currently for this one? (laughs) Sorry. It's too far in advance. It's too far in advance to know. These things happen. I'm sure our listeners will forgive us. I'm sure they will. I think, I think it's going to be a good trade-off. You know, you sacrifice a would you rather question and, you know, probably a book character cosplay or two and you get episodes with higher quality recordings and you won't twitch as much because i mean you know the eye twitching can get really scary yeah oh oh oh, it's kicked in yeah yeah yep yeah so anyway (laughs) we'll see we'll see what happens Check back next week and see if, one, I have erupted in flames, or two, you have a higher quality episode. Those are the only options. I'm, I'm hoping both happens, actually. But the quality of the eruption... You want me to erupt in flames? No, I just think the, the sound of the eruption will be really, you know, mwah, chef's kiss quality. Mm. You, you'll get all the nuances mm. of the crackling. Yeah. okay. And the popping. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Yikes. So, hey, you want to talk about this book that we're talking about? Yeah, why not? Why not? That's what we do. That's what we do on this podcast, It's a vicious rumor. It's a vicious rumor. Unsubstantiated. 
Have you got any yeah. background information? I I do. Oh my god, <laughs> the sounds. I'm, I'm counting down the hours. I do have background information about this book. It is from NPR. So that's kind of neat. And this is about inventing Nimona's look. Noelle Stevenson said, I was kind of inspired by the fact that I never really wanted to cosplay as a lot of the female characters out there. Cosplay is, you know, dressing up in the costume of a hero or a comic character or a movie character. I wanted to dress as guys and I felt that I wanted to do a costume that people who weren't interested in looking particularly buxom or sensual might want to dress as. You know, she's she's stocky and she wears pink, but is still very kind of butch. I just wanted to see a character that I haven't necessarily seen before, especially as the protagonist. Yeah. And so yeah. obviously we all know why I selected this background info, Bird, as I lean in and tell you, Bird. It's about cosplay, and that makes me happy. Yes, yes. I like her reasoning, though, because she definitely comes across in the drawing of Nimona. Have we said that this is actually our second graphic novel? I don't think we've actually said Nimona is a graphic no, novel. No, no, we did. No, we didn't announce it. We didn't announce it yet that this is a graphic novel. It's our second graphic novel covered on the show. In a very short space of time. Really, it is. It really, really is. But do you know what else it is? It's an audiobook. Yes. Featuring some fantastic narrators. Yes. Some fantastic voice actors. Because it's got a full cast. So it's really great. It's very well really, done. Really. I really enjoyed the audiobook. Me too. Especially because it features, you know some of my favorite people but uh that's that's getting ahead it's it getting is. too far it ahead is. i want to talk is. about that later we will yeah uh so i read this one accidentally in one sitting <laughs> <laughs> and then and then when i found out that it was an audiobook i accidentally listened to it in one go too yeah. you know accidentally <laughs> accidentally I read it in three sittings, but that's because, you know, I was writing the summary with this one, so you have to take the break. But I did listen to it in one go. It was all far too quick. I really enjoyed the audiobook. <laughs> yeah, it's a very short audiobook. It's like two hours long. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everyone can go and listen to this one. Yeah. And, you know, if you speed it up like we do, you can listen to this one in eight minutes. <laughs> Okay, not, not quite eight. That's that's a little too fast. That's a little bit of an exaggeration. It's, it's like eight and a half. A right, you're right. <laughs> I kept seeing the Mona in our in in the local um, friendly comic book shop. I keep seeing it all the time. And when you said the Mona, I was like, I'm, "What is it?" And then when I saw the cover, I was, oh, but I could never remember what it's about. It's one of these where I keep picking up thinking this looks fun and putting it down and not buying it probably because I'm at my purchase limit for the that particular point or something or other that's come up so I've, I've never got round to buying it I own it now um, but yeah I keep seeing it <laughs> <laughs> I keep seeing it and I'm so glad that we've actually I say forced because sometimes it does feel like we, we do cover books that we wouldn't necessarily either have gotten round to reading or would necessarily have picked up ourselves because we've been recommended it by somebody else, but then really, 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 really loved it and enjoyed it. So, yay, good one, good call. Yeah, yeah, I. Plus, uh... it fits nicely with our book theme this month. Yes, we have a brand new month, so that means we have a brand new book theme, which is Something Ain't Right Here. Read a book what is it set in an alternate universe or yes. an alternate reality i can't remember the exact words you think i would be able to remember them but slight twist something on. yes something something not quite right hey as the title would suggest 
<laughs> anyway. Read a book with an alternate history or a book set in an alternate universe. Ah, I see. I see. So, shall we begin the summary? Yeah, why not? <laughs> Ballister Blackheart. The biggest name in super villainy. A true inspiration has an intruder in his lair. The intruder is a kid called Nimona, who claims the agency sent her to be his new sidekick. Uh, no. He doesn't believe her, which is okay, because it's a lie. Ballister tries to kick Nimona out. He doesn't need some kid following him around, but Nimona tells Ballister she isn't a kid. She's a shark! <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> She's not always a shark, but she is always a shapeshifter. This changes things completely. Nimona, you're hired. They set about planning their evil plan to kidnap a king with genetically modified dragons, demand a ransom, and blow stuff up for emphasis. <laughs> Nimona tries to offer some constructive feedback about adding chaos, murdering the king, and stealing the throne, and taking out Ballister's greatest foe, Sir Goldenloin. But no, Nimona, that's not how things work. <laughs> nope. You can't just murder people, Nimona. <laughs> Not right. Ballister will kill Sir Goldenloin one day. One day. After all, Goldenloin was the one responsible for the loss of Ballister's arm. They were great friends once, heroes in training, but then one day they had a joust against each other. Ballister knocked Goldenloin from his horse, but in a jealous rage, Goldenloin took out his gun and shot Ballister's arm clean off. Alas, the institution has no use for a one-armed hero, so now, with a robotic arm, Ballister has taken the only path open to him. Villainy! <laughs> in a test run heist for some science... Ballister and the Mona and <laughs> Fal. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. Science! Science! Ballister and the Mona are caught by Golden Loin. Ooh, he makes the Mona so mad. Ballister <laughs> instructs her to stand down, but the guards arrive. Before anyone realises what's happening, the Mona has transformed into a wolf and starts ripping into the guards. At <laughs> one point, she changes his. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing at this. what happens. At one point, she changes into a sweet, innocent girl, only to steal a dagger from a guard and stab him in his back. <laughs> one guard flees and raises the alarm, but Nimona is hot on his heels. Meanwhile, Ballister and Golden Loin have watched all of this go down. <laughs> Golden Loin is sworn to fight Ballister. It is, after all, his job. Ballister just wants to stop the rampage of his new sidekick. I mean, oh, <laughs> the self-destruct sequence as well has been initiated. Run! Flee for your life! <laughs> Ballister wants to find Nimona, but there just isn't time. And he, along with Goldenloin, make it out just in time. Back at Castle Blackheart, Ballister is watching the news report about the explosion and feeling sad at the loss of his new sidekick when he gets a call from the director of the Institution of Law Enforcement and Heroics. The director notes that the swaths of dead bodies isn't Ballister's usual style and that the rampaging kid needed to be stopped somehow. So, a massive explosion was just the trick. Ballister can't believe it. What kind of monster blows up a building to kill one kid? The director says that she isn't a monster. She's a shark! <laughs> <laughs> Ramona! 
<laughs> She's infiltrated the institution and has stolen their big book of top secret stuff. Just as she's about to end the call, a guard walks in, and Nimona changes into a dragon and takes him out. Nimona, stop doing that! <laughs> Nimona returns to Castle Blackheart as a bird, grabs a sword from the refrigerator, <laughs> and turns into a cat to pounce off Ballister's head to sit on top of the fridge. <laughs> Very cat-like behaviour. While Ballister is still not happy with Nimona's tactics, Nimona is just as unhappy with Ballister's lack of evil. And she wants in on his plans. Ballister, however, wants to know Nimona's backstory. Of course, it's a downer. When Nimona was six, raiders from the west constantly attacked her village. One day, when she was out gathering berries, she stumbled upon a witch trapped in a hole. In exchange for the strength to beat the raiders, Nimona agreed to help the witch. The witch thought it would be a great idea to turn Nimona into a dragon so she could fly down, pick her up, and be strong enough to defeat her enemies. Great! However, the witch <laughs> wasn't a very good witch, and she never told Nimona how to change back into a girl, and she was driven away from her village. After a few weeks of learning to master the shape-shifting power, Nimona returned to her village, only to find it decimated. Fleeing back into the forest, Nimona learned to look after herself with her own tooth and claw. Anyway, can we order pizza? <laughs> Meanwhile, at the institution, the director isn't happy with Golden Loin. He let a child bring about the destruction of their finest research facility and failed to mention her shapeshifting abilities. She cannot allow this. You know what isn't a problem for a girl who can shapeshift into a rhino? Doors. With <laughs> uber high security. <laughs> Nimona's ability to change size and mass is fascinating to Ballister, and he wants to do some tests, but Nimona is... Well, not gonna let that happen. Subject change! Let's snoop through the institution's top secret plans! After a boring six minutes of decoding, Ballister finds plans involving Jade Root, a very rare, very poisonous, very outlawed plant associated with dark magic, and that the institution? They're stockpiling it. Time to make some trouble for the institution. Yeah. Yes. Villainy! <gasps> At the institution, the director is told to turn on Channel 6 News. They are covering a story about the institution hoarding Jade Root and advising people to check their food for the poison. Golden Loin comes running in, demanding to know if it's true. Of course it isn't. Pointed look. The director orders some guards to take out the news anchor and when the news anchor starts covering a story about Golden Loin's codpiece, yeah, that incites Golden Loin to join them. At the news station, the anchor is nowhere to be seen, but then Golden Loin spots a pink rat. Quick! Catch that shapeshifter! Chasing the rat down a corridor, he's able to get his hands on it, but it's covered in paint. Ah, rats! <laughs> Pun. <laughs> A guard leans in and whispers, Good try, though, before disappearing. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. It is. It really is. Ballister has a multi-phase evil plan. Yes. For this phase, he has concocted a poison he's put into apples that will make people sick causing rumors to spread about the jade root and instilling distrust in the institution. Nimona will plant the poison apples, a classic approach, through the city disguised as a cantankerous old crone. <laughs> then, they just sit back for a few weeks while the poison works. Weeks? Boring. What are they going to do? <gasps> I know! Let's go rob a bank! Yay! 
In the bank, the cashier asks if Ballister is making a deposit. Nope. A withdrawal. With his gigantic gun. The Mona takes the opportunity to change into a veritable zoo's worth of animals in the background, knocking out guards and scaring the customers. The cashier takes Ballister to the vault and the door is huge and thick. Should be no problem for this completely untested gun. Boom! (laughs) Yeah, it works. And there is so much gold. Yay! Nimona wants all the loot, but Ballister instructs her to change into a dragon on the roof and give everyone a good scare. Meanwhile, Golden Loin has turned up and is trying to get the guards to raid the bank for him with minor success. But Golden Loin will not let Ballister and his psychic evade him again, so he enters the bank. Nimona has relayed Golden Loin's presence to Ballister, who readies his gigantic gun. Let's fire at a wall in time for Nimona to swoop down and fly away with sacks of gold and Golden Loin shouting in the background, Darn you! Back at class, class, oh fuck. Back at Castle Blackheart, Ballister notices Nimona has been shot in the leg with an arrow. He patches her up and orders her to rest until it heals, so they play a game of world domination. Meanwhile, the hospital is recording more and more cases of this weird sickness, and the director of the institution instructs Golden Loin to take care, wink, of the sidekick problem, wink. No, not arrest her, Golden Loin. Dispose of her. Kill her! <laughs> Ballister is watching the news reports of the outbreak of a mysterious disease rumoured to be linked to the institution when the mourner comes in and plonks a crown on his head. She's convinced Ballister will take over at the culmination of their evil plan, but Ballister is more pragmatic. While the mourner goes to make dinner on her newly healed leg, shapeshifter magic, Ballister gets a phone call from Golden Loin. He wants to meet. At the antlered snake, Golden Loin warns Ballister to send his sidekick away because he has orders to take her out. Ballister calls him out for the unheroic nature of his orders. Things degenerate from there. Tension from their joust years ago is still at the surface. Golden Loin thinks Ballister should be over it, but hello, he lost an arm and was forced to become a villain. Thrown words become thrown fists, and the brawl crashes outside where Ballister knocks Golden Loin to the ground. He walks away from Golden Loin, saying, unlike the institution, he won't take his arm, even though he is the villain. Is he, though? Come on. <laughs> the next day, as Ballister is inspecting his wounds, Nimona pushes a flyer under his door to a science expo. Ballister could use the cheering up, but they can't go to an exposition. They're villains! Well then, here, where this fake beard? (laughs) (laughs) I love it. If you had time for cosplay, I would totally insist on the fake beard one. (laughs) I mean, I should. I, I should. I should have time for this one. It'll be the one that's, you know, last week, next week, future conditional tense that is not happening. Anyway, disguised as a father with his little boy, our villainous duo have a lovely time at the expo. And when Nimona, sorry, little Gregor gets tired, she transforms into a cat to be carried. At one stall, Ballister meets Dr. Meredith Blitzmeyer, who is trying to harness anomalous energy and has a green glowing thingy as a demonstration, which goes then which is odd. It's at this moment guards spot Ballister and try to arrest him. Ballister runs, and obviously chaos ensues, and it's made worse because Nimona can't transform from her cat shape. 
Things explode, catch on fire, and are destroyed. Thankfully, Nimona is able to change into her dragon form and they make it back to Blackheart Castle, where Nimona rages at having her powers stuck. This doesn't happen. It's not okay. At this point, Nimona pretty much hulks out with Ballister trying to calm her down and we see again that Ballister likes his sidekick and is trying to take care of her. Nimona, unfortunately, has been hurt too much in the past. Mm. So, Nimona changes her hair colour to purple. It looks good! Ballister orders a pizza without sardines. And I'm enjoy. <laughs> Golden Lloyd, meanwhile, is getting an upgrade. The director is none too pleased with his failures, so he's getting a kick-ass mech suit and similarly <laughs> outfitted team of people. While the director wants him to eliminate Blackheart as well, she'll settle for him being removed and the sidekick terminated. She's being very clear at this point now. Yes. They're going Don't to set a words. trap for our villainous duo. At a royal trap um, tournament, excuse me, at a royal tournament, Nimona spikes an attendee's food which causes them to be sick, which panics the crowd, making them think it's the mysterious disease again. Golden Loin's souped-up guards zero in on the commotion and, under the orders of the director, start to subdue the crowds and save the nobles. Ballister can suddenly be heard over the loudspeakers, telling the people he is not fighting them, but the corrupt institution, and they can help. The crowds turn on the guards. The institution has zeroed in on Ballister's location and Golden Loin secures him. Ballister puts up no fight and it's kind of like smug about the whole thing and, you know, the whole time he's being taken back to the institution and to a new awfully spacious room. Hmm. <laughs> then BAM! An Angliosaurus bursts in, causing the room to go into lockdown. <laughs> Nimona takes this challenge and turns into a triceratops, and a bear, and a fox, and an octopus, taking out the guards left, right, and centre. Eventually, Nimona transforms into her dragon form, while Ballister and Goldenloin fight with their words and their swords. Eventually, Nimona is overwhelmed, and in trying to escape, turns into a huge, monstrous lizard. Ballister is shouting at her to get out and to escape. A guard cuts off her head. <gasps> Golden Loin knocks Ballister unconscious and the director receives a report that it's over. <gasps> oh no. Oh no, bird. Oh no. It's not over. Um, Nimona transforms into this black and fiery, monstrous creature and burns the guards. Golden Loin only just manages to hide under his shield. Then, Nimona takes Ballister home. Golden Loin is badly injured and the director informs him he's being replaced. Ooh. Mm, burn. Burn. <laughs> <laughs> Ballister is in a terrible mood and snaps at Nimona because she has been gone a while. She also has a new hairdo, by the way. Nimona has found out that some of the infected rioters have died, which makes Ballister angry, as that shouldn't have happened. It's not how he designed it. Plans need to be brought forward now. He's going to have to heal the sick people. Nimona struggles with this a little as she sees this as an opportunity to strike at the institution. However, Ballister would see this as being no better than the institution itself. When Ballister tries to talk about what happened during the battle, Nimona becomes defensive and can't recall what witch Ballister is talking about who gave her the power to shipshift. Huh. Ballister now realises Nimona made her whole backstory up. Nimona leaves the castle angry at Ballister. Ballister tries to rest but can't, so he goes to his lab and tries to call Nimona, but the call fails. Instead, he contacts Meredith Blitzmeyer and discusses a hypothetical shapeshifter problem. Blitzmeyer suggests that this hypothetical shapeshifter of Ballister could be one from the legend of Glorith. 
it was this great scaled beast that was slain by Glorith. But what if the beast killed Glorith and took her place? Huh. Oh. <laughs> Later, Ballister sneaks into the hospital and cures the sick people from his poison and is captured and knocked out by the royal guard. He wakes up in a cell with Goldenloin as his guard, who has been demoted right down the ladder. They have a bit of a heart-to-heart, -heart, and we find out that Goldenloin was told by the director to win the joust all those years ago, that she supplied a special lance to ensure his victory. Goldenloin didn't want to use it and wasn't going to, as he was confident he would win, but the balance of the different lance was off and made him misjudge. He doesn't remember shooting Ballister's arm and is sorry that he did it. It's the first time he has apologized. Suddenly, the alarms sound. The director has summoned Ballister. She has Nimona trapped in this large glass prison and keeps zapping her. No matter what Nimona transforms into, she can't escape. Nimona, unfortunately, fell for the director's trap and tried to rescue Ballister. The director then zaps Ballister to force Nimona's compliance to extract some of her blood. Nimona is getting angrier and angrier, eyes going white, fangs growing. Nimona taunts the director for not doing her homework as the extracted blood, which seems like normal human blood, explodes and reforms. <laughs> Nimona has control of her individual cells and is able to create a beast of smoke, fire, darkness and rage and releases it to rampage. It spews fire all over the lab. Goldenloin grabs Ballister and they run from the facility, Ballister begging to go back and help Nimona. The director has also managed to make it out. While the monstrous... Beast rampages through the city, burning institution buildings and the palace and killing the king, Ballister formulates a plan. If they can get Blitzmeyer's machine, they can trap Nimona in one form long enough for Ballister to rescue human Nimona. Blitzmeyer, who doesn't watch the news or... <laughs> Look out a window, it seems, didn't know of the rampage and is happy for Ballister to borrow the only prototype of her life's work if he returns it unscathed. She's excited to see that the hypothetical shapeshifter is not so hypothetical after all. Meanwhile, the director has a jade root gun and fires it at the beast. That's a bad idea. <laughs> Just makes it angrier. The director yeah. is burned alive, horrifically. It's horrific. It's terrible. It's, yeah. Golden Loin, yes. back in his knight's armour, is able to distract the beast. We get a flashback at this point to a young Nimona in a hall after her parents gave her up. Nimona was a sickly child until one day, after a particularly bad illness, she recovered. Mm. Her parents think she is an imposter. Nimona was taken to a facility where she was subject to terrible tests. Essentially, as a small child, she was hideously tortured. When Ballister finds her in the glass prison, Nimona is the small child again. She's been split in two, and she needs to put herself back together. Yikes. Together, Ballister carrying Nimona, they head to the beast, who is battling Golden Loin. Though Golden Loin is putting up a good fight, he is losing badly. Ballister begs the beast to let him go. As Nimona tries to change or reform, she realizes she can't because of Blitzmeyer's device. This angers Nimona, and she tells Ballister that he is just like all the others. Ballister begs and pleads that he is her friend. He knows she isn't a monster. The beast rears up for a huge blast of flame, but Ballister is able to escape, grab a jade root gun, and fire. The beast falls, and so does Ballister, to his knees, and tells Nimona that he is sorry before grabbing Goldenloin. Unfortunately, 
the self-destruct system at the facility has kicked in. As the purge is about to hit, Nimona holds on to the beast as Ballister with Golden Loin escape the facility, the white hot explosion behind them. At the hospital, Sir Ambrosius Goldenloin and former villain turned champion of the people, Ballista Blackheart, are credited with bringing down the beast and ending the Night of Terror. Goldenloin is in critical condition, and though Ballista isn't in great condition himself, he won't leave Goldenloin's side. A doctor comes in and checks Goldenloin's chart, and Ballista challenges her when she calls the mourner a monster, saying she wasn't, she was his friend. Blitzmeyer comes in then, and she tells Ballista... It isn't his responsibility to save everyone, though that is very difficult to accept. A doctor comes in then. Hang on, she's already been in. When the doctor looks at the chart, she wants to know why there is a picture of a shark. Ballista tears (laughs) out of the room. In the distance, he sees Nimona. She turns back and offers Ballista a wave before disappearing into the crowd. So Gordon Loring wakes up and is asking for Ballista. The city is being rebuilt. Blitzmeyer and Blackheart Labs have been established, and Golden Loin is in slow recovery. Bowster hasn't seen Nimona and probably wouldn't know if it was her if he did. If she does come back, he wants her to know that she'll know him as her friend. The oh, end. The end. The end. Ooh. I'm not pleasant. convinced that bird is not Nimona. You know, bird could be Nimona. We don't know, because Nimona can be anything. Well, shall we take a break and question bird? We should. I think, I think that we should. Yeah. What's up, fellow book nerds? It's time to feed your fiction shelf addiction. Hear book club style roundtables, bookish chats, and more. Join Tamara and her friends for fantasy and thriller read-alongs and other shenanigans over on the Shelf Addiction Podcast. Listen now on your podcatcher of choice. Subscribe for free and you too can have a shelf addiction. That bird's a tough nut to crack. I know. You'll never get the truth out of this bird. No. This bird is not a stool pigeon. It's stoic. It's got the best poker face. It really does. I like my little bird friend. It's <laughs> not what we're talking about. We're not talking about bird. We're not talking about bird in this episode. Bird featured heavily in our last episode. Yes, bird was the star of the last episode. Yes. Yes, bird was. <laughs> Anywho... Anywho, let's stand up uh, moments. Let's, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, really, each and every surprise shark or <laughs> exclamation of science were, I think, probably my favorite things. The, the panel where the <laughs> when Mourn has changed into Ballister and has arms in the air wobbling them around and going science and pretending to be Ballister was hilarious it's, it's really good I like I like the first time that she became a shark and she was just standing there explaining how she's a shapeshifter as a shark and she's like standing on weird little shark legs <laughs> so good <laughs> those spindly little tiny legs were it's hilarious excellent. I'm not a monster. I'm a shark! (laughs) (laughs) And then the end, the doctor's like, what is a shark doing in this chart? (laughs) Nimona! Sharks will always be associated with Nimona. Why shark? Sharks are cool. Why a shark? Why shark? Because sharks are not expected to be on land. So, you know, people people are scared of sharks, but you can only ever be spe- scared of a shark if you're in the water. You're walking down your street, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden somebody turns into a shark. You're going to be like, shit, what the hell? That's freaking terrifying. <laughs> and 
and then you look down and look at its tiny little spindly legs, and then you start laughing, and then it bites your head off, and you're dead. Well, at least you died laughing. That's true. Laughing at those tiny little baby spindly legs. I love them. I love them so much. It doesn't make any sense, and they're perfect. <laughs> None of her transformations <laughs> make sense, which is why Ballister's like, I need to run tests on you. The mass, it doesn't make sense. How does this work? Magic! Do you know, I quite like that, actually. The fact that Ballister's turning around going, this isn't f- possible. It, it de- defies the laws of nature and physics. This little girl shouldn't be able to turn herself into an Ankylosaurus or a dragon. The mass difference is too... It doesn't work. It, because you see you see the program... You see horror movies. You see, like, the... The, the the creature TV shows and movies and they never question it. It's just magic. And I get it's just magic. But now and again, you like somebody to question it. Mm-hmm. And this was done perfectly. <laughs> but it doesn't make sense. It's magic. <laughs> I like that. Oh, you know, you know what I also really liked? The Science Expo. Oh, I wanna go to the Science Expo. Yeah, um, I think my favorite part, though, about the Science Expo was that Nimona was just eating funnel cakes. I mean, Gregor. Gregor was just eating funnel cakes the whole time. Like, why are there funnel cakes at a Science Expo? <laughs> why wouldn't there be? Uh, this is what I miss about, I, I adore funnel cakes. I've had a couple of very delicious funnel cakes when I've been to America. And you just don't get them over here. And yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah <gasps> Recently, good. though, I got very excited when I was in Edinburgh. They were advertising a science expo. I know, I know, and I just missed it by like three days or something like that. And I was like, no, science! 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 That's a shame. I know. I'm so sad that you missed it. One of those <sighs> things. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Made me think of the morning. It made me think of fictional hangover and I got very excited. So I was like, ah. Oh. <laughs> oh. That's so sweet. And heartwarming. And then I got angry at people being too close to me. Get out my way, people! I don't like people. And then you turned into a shark. And then I turned into a land shark, yes. With spindly little legs. <laughs> Nashy teeth. (laughs) (laughs) I think, for me, the standout bits were just not necessarily the overall arching storyline. It was, it started off really, really funny. And then it got daft. And then it got scary. And then it got heartwarming. I was like, oh. And... It didn't maintain that comedy all the way through, which was a little bit disappointing from one point of view. But then the 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 theme, and like the 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 take, like the moral of the story, it couldn't be funny all the way through. Right. Um. But it was the little bits like <laughs> the movie scene. So at one point, it's not included in the summary, but at one point they're sitting there and they're watching a movie, and the mourner picks a zombie movie, <laughs> and she is terrified she's hiding under ballista's um cloak and ballista's like what the hell what is this this is just a comedy of errors <laughs> and he starts picking apart the reasons why the undead make terrible minions <laughs> or when they're playing um world domination and it just degenerates and then gets set on fire <laughs> yes Yes. I've played those tabletop games where all I want to do is set it on fire. It kind of felt like it kind of felt like a monopoly sort of thing. Yes. With the different you know, little pieces that you can play as and you know, the extreme frustration at the end and setting it on fire really gave me a monopoly vibe more than a like a full on tabletop game vibe. Yeah. 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 It, yeah. It's Cause, definitely a board I mean, game it, rather than a tabletop game. There is yeah, a difference. If you don't want to set Monopoly on fire while you're playing it, 
You're not playing it right. Yeah. 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 Terrible. See, this is why whenever I have played Monopoly, I always insist on being the banker because for me, the game of Monopoly is cheating. So it's being the banker and then trying to steal all the money and Mm -hmm. shortchange everybody. That's Monopoly for me, not the actual moving around the board buying property. Yeah. That's boring. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, that's not very fun. It's trying to be sneaky. Um, can we talk about the audiobook a little bit? Yeah. I loved the audiobook. I mean, of course, of course the audiobook is going to be great because it's got a full cast. And so when we found out that it was an audiobook, we both got very excited. Especially when we learned that January Lavoie was involved. Yeah. Because we love January Lavoie. And also Rebecca Solaire, who's also very fantastic and has narrated a lot of the books that we've talked about on the podcast. Yes. But uh, January Lavoie was the director and... You know, we, we've we talked about January in the past as being three people in a trench coat, and it's still true. It still holds true. She's a very mm-hmm. evil director in this one, but in real life, she's the most pleasant human being in the entire world. Acting. Yeah. <laughs> um, I really Rebecca enjoyed... Solaire was great. Yeah, I love her, her laughter as Nimona. I yeah. didn't realize it was Rebecca Solaire, but when I heard the laughter, I was like, I've heard this before. <laughs> this is familiar. And I racked my brains. And I kind of got it not... You know when you can you narrow it down to like, I'm sure we, li- we I've listened to it in this kind of genre. Mm-hmm. But I couldn't remember the title. And then when I got to the end, because as we said, it only lasted eight and a half minutes on double speed. Um, and they said, Namorn is voiced by Re- Rebecca Soler. I was like, yes! Yes! Yeah. Yes. It was, it was lovely. Um, I really enjoyed I also, it. I also really enjoyed Jonathan Davis as Blackheart, but we haven't listened to any of his books on the show before, but he was great as Blackheart. Yeah. Um, and something I discovered while looking into, like, I, I had to look to see if we had covered any Jonathan Davis books before, and we hadn't. But while I was searching, I found that you can watch clips of Rebecca Solaire and Jonathan Davis narrating this book on YouTube. And wow. It's adorable. It's adorable. You have to watch Rebecca Solaire act because she's so cute. She does such a good job. And she's like, you can just see she is Nimona. Yeah. It's fantastic. And then Jonathan Davis is like this looking at her from the corner of his eyes. And he's like, you know, kind of hunched over, and he's definitely, he's definitely a villain, you know, with a soft spot, but he's just the whole time, like, what is going on here? Stop it. <laughs> but you can, you can watch some of these clips, and they're pretty great. Um, I we will. should share a link. We should share a link. Definitely. Definitely. It's oh, that's excellent. They're all very Rebecca short. Rebecca Solaire like, is one of these tops. narrators who I'd absolutely love to get on the show at some point i would love to talk to her we'll have to we'll have to make it happen (laughs) speaking of the director just harking back to what you said earlier do you know at one point the mourner says um are you a goblin or something like that lines and the director goes it's none of your business what the hell is the director then what is she it's hard to say. We don't know much about the director, other than the fact that she's very menacing and evil. When she got her head, the the um, headset blown off, it took like the full wig and chainmail <laughs> get up. It was an entire headpiece, <laughs> communication headpiece. It's like the mantle of director. That's <laughs> <laughs> good. Oh, um. Oh, I want to go back and talk about something else that I really liked from the audiobook. Um, and it's a it's it's a new trend in illustrated audiobooks where there is a separate narrator who describes the panels, describes yeah. what's going on in each of the pictures, so you're like you're not missing out 
on the weird stuff that's happening in the background, especially when the panels don't have any text. Yeah. And I think that's really cool. That's a that's becoming a thing in picture books for children as well. There's a narrator who says, oh, you know, the rock is tumbling down the hill. And then there's the narrator who actually reads the words on the page. And I think that's so cool. Yeah, I, I really it. like it. I've never actually listened to an audiobook based on a illustrated book before. I've listened to children's audiobooks, obviously, but um, the very the, the very traditional, the ones that I've heard so far, they mm-hmm. tend to have a lot more music in and like mm-hmm. a bit more playful with the narration. Um, but it's mm-hmm. the first time I've listened to a graphic novel audiobook and I've really, really enjoyed it. However, I will say um, I finished the book the night before, listened to it in the morning, and I could tell that there was additional dialogue to the narrat- to the audiobook narration. Um, yeah. So there was some extra speech that, um, that from Golden Loin during the final battle. Odd little bits and pieces, but it didn't deter from the... Dis- or distract from the story. It probably added to it, to be fair. Especially in the final scenes, it's more pictorial than it is dialogue. So it just mm-hmm. helped describe those scenes a little bit. So even though it's not a 100% true representation of the dialogue, it's still a 100% true representation of the book, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. I did really enjoy yeah. it, though. And I think it's one of these short, snippy ones where it's a good introduction into audio, like an ensemble audio book for people who might not mm-hmm. have had it otherwise. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's 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 so... It's it's so well done. I really really enjoyed it, and oh, it's a yeah. good good solid cast of audiobook narrators. Yeah, it's very good. Um, who uh, who was your favorite character? I don't know. I kind of liked. I kind of liked everyone to different for different reasons. I I adored Namona Spunk, but I also enjoyed her rage. Yes. Um, <laughs> I like tiny shark filled rage. Yes. I love Golden Loin's kind of like naivety. Yes. And he was like the stereotypical blonde hero who can do no wrong, but really, it, 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 he. It's probably because he's not. He's, he's ill informed. I like the director's evilness. Like. Yes. I like Ballista's not really the villain. He has a heart. I know. Yeah. Yeah, he's actually the hero. Even though he does make a lot of people sick. (laughs) Right. But then he heals them. It's a means to an end at the end of the day. It is a means to to an end. I don't condone it. Like, I'm not saying to people, go out and go and make people purposefully sick in order to bring down an evil institution. Um, He is a man of science. Yeah. And he's used it that way. I like Blitzmeyer. Yeah. I kind of want. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I kind of want a, a spin-off, uh, like the the terribly awful, awfully ridiculous adventures of Meredith Blitzmeyer. Yeah, I would be okay with that. Like, let's let's check in with them later and see what's going on in the um, in their lab that they've created. Yeah, but also remember Meredith does go on an adventure um, to find the anomalous energy. She goes over the hills and she has a little... Yes. And she has the, the book of notes that she's like, quick, find my book of notes. Put the tea on, I'll get the book of notes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, yeah, I, 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 did, I did like her. I like, I don't know, it's just, it's difficult to say because yeah. I liked everybody for different reasons. Yeah, you kind of you have to. They're all, they're all very well rounded characters. Yes. So you have to love them all. You have to. Yes. Everybody served a purpose. It wasn't a random cast. It was everybody who served a purpose. Right. Yeah. Even the even the like the sellers, in the market with the funnel cake, and she put when she exchanges the sugar for the um. The sickness powdery thing that Ballista poison? concocts. The, po- the, poison. the poison. Yeah. And the, even they were good. <laughs> and very well yeah. done in the audiobook. They were yes. that was excellent. Yes. Yeah, they were fantastic. 
as much as I like all of the characters, I really think that I like Ballister the best. Because yeah. he's my favorite type of villain. You know, he's not really a bad guy, but he is a bad guy, but he's not a bad guy at the same time. Would you call him a lovable asshole? Uh, I, you know, I don't know that he's an asshole. No. So I don't, I don't think so, but I really enjoyed him. And as I was listening to it, I imagined Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> yes. Yes. 100% yes. That is you know, perfect just, fan casting right there. He's just so dry. And I feel Stoic. like that's... Yeah. Yeah. Who could be Golden you... Loin? Honestly, I also... With with Golden Loin, I was imagining Gilderoy Lockhart. So then that would be Kenneth Branagh. But I don't know that... I don't know that he would be ideal... No. Just, you know, age difference wise, but but yeah, that's who I imagined. I imagined Gilderoy Lockhart. You know, just kind of like a bumbling sort of guy. <laughs> I I got somewhat a, a Chris Helmsworth vibe from him, but not bulked out. Not Thor Chris yeah. Helmsworth. You know, like possibly first incarnation of Thor before he starts to get really beefy. But because Chris Helmsworth got good comedy chops as well so yeah, he's got a, he's, uh, he's, maybe, it's, it's more of a swimmer's as, build maybe as his character from uh, Ghostbusters yeah or Men in Black you know he was he was thinner in those movies he wasn't so bulky yeah in those so I yeah. could see that yeah I see it's that. not perfect it's not perfect by a long way I almost wanted to say Tom Hiddleston is Ballister as well, but then I think Benedict Cumberbatch and Tom Hiddleston can, as much as I adore both of them, especially Tom Hiddleston, um, they can be interchanged because of the quite similar, you know, thespian styles. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, oh, were you surprised by anything? Just no explanation for the director. I, I need to know. I need to know. <laughs> you? I was surprised that Nimona isn't a girl. She's a self-disintegrating monster. <laughs> she, she she almost seems like a hellfire beast, doesn't she? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's... With a sense of humour. Right. And spindly legs. And spindly legs and wonderful rampages. Yes. Um, I think that I was also surprised by the fact that, as you were saying earlier, you know, it, it it started out funny and then it went through these changes and by the end it was very heartwarming. So I think that I was surprised by that, you yeah. know, because it was so funny at the beginning and then by the end you're like, oh. Yeah, I so agree sweet. with that. That it, was surprising it, it, to me. Yeah, same, same. It changed its tone completely three or four times yeah. but that was good it was good it, it, it suited the story completely it would have been inappropriate to have had those comedic moments I mean you know you've got a character called Golden Loin you don't really need to insert a joke in at that point no. I enjoyed the undertones and the hints that there is more to the relationship between Ballister Blackheart and Brosius Golden Loin um mm -hmm. And it's there, and you know it's there, but it's not outright said that they are or were right. together when they were heroes right. in training. Um, I don't know if the version you read, you got the extra stories at the end. Mm -mm. There's two Christmas stories at the end. We should do this as a Christmas live, maybe. I was thinking so. I mean, it is very short. It really, really is short. But it's short enough for us to be able to do as a live. And it's cute. It's literally three pages long. I think that sounds lovely. Oh, 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 I just thought of something else. I thought of something else that I... I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't surprised by it because it's, you know... 
why we decided to talk about this one as I lean in and talk to Bird again. Um, it's, I, I really, really liked the anachronisms. I loved the, like, their having a joust and a duel and there's dragons and then they sit down and watch the news or Namona gets something out of the fridge or they order a pizza like you don't know when this story is set because there's lots of you know <laughs> old timey things and then you know, there's a pizza. It's a and rent I really fair liked that. and a science expo had a baby. Yeah. Yeah, it's magic and science. Yes. Well, <laughs> what is magic and unexplained science and vice versa? Yeah. Oh, but I, I really enjoyed that, that too. <laughs> yeah, I did. It was really, and it didn't, it wasn't jarring at all. It fit everything fit. Yeah. Yeah, it did. But it's just funny because you think starting out, you know, there's there's knights and then there's a giant, you know, screen with a director and she's wearing a headset. <laughs> it, just, <laughs> it just makes me happy. And the using swords all the time, but then the pull out the jade root gun. Yeah. Yeah. And the and the mech suit. <laughs> it's perfect. I love it. <laughs> it, is it is really perfect. Oh, and then they sit down and watch zombie movies. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's tiny and adorable and I love it. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Oh gosh. Is I it think time? it's time. It's time. It's definitely time. Good. It's time. It's time for Would You Rather. Pew, 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 pew. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> okay, people. Remember, we have recorded this way in advance. So, unfortunately, we do not have any statistics or comments to read out to you. At right. The moment. Currently. Currently. We have a plan. Let's see if it happens. Yes. Time time is a weird, timey-wimey, wibbly-wobbly thing. It really is. It really so, is. Between you and it's me, It's very Amanda, fitting. It's fitting for our episode today that time doesn't make sense. If this, we've fallen into an alternative history. We where have. Where would you rather's aren't posted on social media. I know. Whoa. 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 Mind blown. Whoa. So, question one. Would you rather have science... Science! ...or magic? This is a really difficult question. Yes. And I'm still thinking about the answer. Right? If I have science, do I know science? Am I well versed in science? You are the lord and master of your own destiny. Mm. Mm. You know, forget that question. I'm going to take magic. I don't know why I'm thinking about it so much. Magic. It's magic. Yeah, magic I was thinking. Magic can include science. It's magic. Ma exactly. Magic can include science, and science is just something that's explainable. Um, I do not mind the unexplainable of magic. So if you take magic, therefore you can have magic and science. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Because at least with magic, you can do the healing magic, but then you can just do sparkly magic and have some fun with it. Yeah. Ooh, and I do like sparkles. Exactly. You could make fireworks Excellent. without the noise to be animal friendly. I could... Mm -hmm. I could use my magic to stop all the outside noise that constantly ruins every single episode that we have. Yes. You could use magic to order pizza. Yes. Ah, yeah. Yes. 
I mean, you can use science to order pizza. Plan. That's what a telephone is. Right, but yeah. The difference but you can is, also use magic. Yeah, I can imagine you just snap your fingers. Pizza, you know? Yeah. Or you could order it from your favorite place, even if your favorite place is, you know, 3,000 miles away. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Magic. Yeah, magic. Clearly cool. we need magic. Cool. Okay, cool. next question. Oh, it's so weird not having statistics to share. We'll see what can we, we'll see what we can do. They might not be included in the audio release, but we might be able to do something because we do love our comments. We do, we do. All right, next question. <laughs> this is just like an open-ended question, really. It's the biggest one ever. <laughs> Would you rather turn into a shark, a wolf? A rhino, a dragon, a bird, an elephant, a cat, an octopus, a dinosaur, flame creature. What else did Nimona turn into? What would you rather turn into? Okay, if, I kind of like the dragon. Like, why not? You've got wings. Yeah. It might be a fire-breathing yeah. dragon. Yeah. You could fly. I mean, don't get me wrong, being a, being a shark with spindly legs sounds very appealing. <laughs> Suddenly, it's a shark. It, it's the legs for me. It's the legs that, that do it. The comedy value cannot be undersold. Mm-mm. But I think probably... No, perfect. Probably dragon. As much as I wouldn't mind being a dinosaur, but then I'd be like, oh no, I'm a dinosaur. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I think I want to go with the, you know, the fiery, rage, smoke, monster beast. That's what that's I because do. I know that's why. That's what exactly. I'm made of. Yes, that's what, what you're I'm made, made of. of anyway. That's what you're currently experiencing every time something drives by the apartment. Yeah, that's that's what's on my insides, and I need to let what's on the inside out. It's all flames and darkness and nightmares and smoke and And evil and And rage. Mm -hmm. But in three weeks' time, darkness. It'll be all (laughs) fluffy rainbows and glittery sparkles and unicorns and yeah, yeah, yeah. Who knows? Who knows what I'm gonna be next next week? Bird, you'll be bird. Oh, bird. Oh, bird. No, this hand. Bird. <laughs> I like bird. Okay, what's our next question? Would you rather take an arrow to the knee or be jousted off a horse? Ow, either way. Yeah, and I'm going to recover from both of them. You know... I think I want to take an arrow to the knee because I don't like horses. I don't want to fall off a horse. And then what if you get trampled by the horse? Or what if you lose an arm? Yeah, good questions. I'm going to take an arrow to the knee. I'm, I'm going to take an arrow to the knee. Oh, Every time I, I hear the arrow f- to the knee. Oh. Every time I hear the phrase arrow to the knee, I just think Skyrim. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Used to be an adventure until I took an arrow to the knee. <laughs> what now I what I have witnessed jousts. I've been to jousting tournaments, and my goodness, they take a lot of skill, and they bloody hurt. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, I mean we've all seen a Knight's Tale. Everybody's seen a Knight's Tale. If you haven't seen a Knight's Tale, go and watch a Knight's Tale. Go watch. Go watch it right now. Exactly. Um. But to actually see it in real life, jeepers. It's terrifying. Yeah. Like, yeah. these people fly. They, they fly, like, they soar like an eagle through the sky. And it hurts. Yeah. And yes, they're wearing armour, but that hurts. And, yeah, and the armor's like, is heavy. The armor's and heavy. You the get hit by that as well. Exactly. Um, the impact is astounding. And then there's not just the impact of the lance hitting you, depending on where it hits you as well as bad times. 
there's the impact from being thrown there's the threat of the horse trampling you i'm like you i'm not overly keen on horses i like them from a distance i'm not confident being close to them yeah i respect them and there's personal space that is their dance place this is my dance space there is no venn diagram it's two very separate circles yeah yeah so i'm going to take an arrow to the knee because i feel like at least it's operable and I'm just going to rest up on the sofa for a period of time and catch up on the TV I've missed this past year. Yeah. Yeah. Let's both take arrows to the knee. Yeah. Read a book. Or 17 million. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. The excuse, not like the excuse to be able to just sit on the sofa time. and do nothing, I'll take it. <laughs> yes. Yes. And I feel like that's more probable if you take an arrow to the knee versus if you get jousted off a horse because you know you could end up in the hospital for a while like maybe you have a concussion or you're in a coma yeah that's not that's not very fun no no arrow to the knee yeah okay arrow to the knee cool next question would you rather Play world domination themed board games or watch zombie themed movies? World domination themed board games because we all know I'm a tabletop gamer. I adore tabletop games. So I'm going to play world domination themed board games. Yeah. Strategize. Take over the world. Yeah. Burn things to the ground. Yeah. And. <laughs> I'm watching zombie themed movies because I Yeah. Horror movies are my life. So it's good. That was an easy one. That was ridiculously easy. It's like, hello, yeah. have you met us? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> What's our last question? Oh Would you rather eat a sardine pizza or a poisoned apple? <laughs> oh gross, I'm eating a poisoned apple. As long as I can recover. As long as I can recover from it. You know, as long as... As long as I get healed. That's what I'm choosing. I'm gonna eat a poisoned apple. I like apples. You know, if it doesn't taste like poison, it'll still be delicious. I'm eating a poisoned apple. I do not want to eat sardines on a pizza that's gross. I'm gonna be gross and eat the sardine pizza. Because oh. I like I like fish food. I don't know if I've ever had sardines. I like anchovies. I love tuna, prawns. I used to get a, a fish food pizza, which was just basically prawns and tuna. And if you put enough cheese on that bad lad, whoa, you're killing off anything. So mm-hmm. just smooth and then garlic, just garlic and cheese and mushrooms and sardines. I will chow mm-hmm. down that sardine pizza. Plus, it doesn't stipulate the size. So it's not like I'm eating a 14-inch pizza. It could just yes, be this are. tiny little snack size. No, you're eating a full giant pizza. Fine, I'll eat the full giant pizza. Can we make a stuffed crust? Because that's just making it more nominal. It's stuffed <laughs> with sardines. Whatever, I'll just... Yeah, but the thing is, though, I'm eating the sardine pizza and I'm going to have some serious fish burps afterwards. I recognise this. Gross. But I'm also <sighs> not poisoning myself and putting myself in hospital. I've been in the hospital plenty. It's fine. I'll get fi- I'll get better. It's fine. Can I you can do read it in this country so you I'm don't there. get the horrible bill then? <laughs> yeah, that would be nice. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh, I can't imagine <laughs> eating sardines on a pizza. Ugh. <laughs> Gross. Gross! <laughs> I had a pizza in Rome once and I actually do not know what was on the topping and I think it was mushrooms but it could have just as easily been like a fish. Ugh. It didn't have this like overly fishy taste but it didn't have an overly mushroomy taste but the, the look of them looked fish like. I don't know what it was. It was a very delicious pizza in Rome. Next, I got it from a pizza place next to the Trevi Fountain. Very nice. But yeah, couldn't tell you what was on top of on, on the toppings. <laughs> Blah. 
Disgusting. Gross. <laughs> no. No, thank you. Is that the end of Would You Rather, please? Yes, it's the end. Gross. Gross. <sighs> okay. Favorite final thought quotes. I feel like we probably have the same ones. Probably. What will you share? <laughs> I'm going to say this one just because of our last Would You Rather. Do you dare put sardines on that pizza? (laughs) (laughs) Gross. Gross. Um, (laughs) And the other one again, licking to our last Would You Rather. Whoa, that's old school villain right there. Are you pissed you're not the fairest of all? (laughs) Oh, that's lovely. Um, on... (laughs) <laughs> okay. <laughs> Again, this thing's so would you rather. Reanimating the dead isn't hard, but they make terrible minions. <laughs> I want to know how to reanimate oh, the dead. Minions. This is just going back to my dreams of necromancy. Yes. Can your terrible minion be Keanu Reeves? Of course. I mean, he would have to die first. But he's reanimated. It's fine. So it's fine, exactly. He can still go back to Hollywood and make his movies. Yeah, it's fine. Only 10% of the takings, though. Being the master. Anywho, um, <laughs> of all the places to fight, they had to choose the room filled with the deadly magical substance. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I thank you. I'm a shark. <laughs> I'm a shark. Spindly like a shark. <laughs> Unhand that science! She's <laughs> <laughs> back to Golden Loin being a doofus and not really knowing things. Unhand that science! <laughs> You can't just go around murdering people. There are rules, Nimona. <laughs> to be fair, you don't need to put the Nimona at the end of that one. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> and then my last one is, Oh yeah, let's make some evil plans. <laughs> I love how Nimona's excited by the fact that his evil plan has multiple phases. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, I, oh, there's another one that I liked, but I didn't write it down. Um, they're talking about going to rob the bank. How would you feel about robbing a bank? Positively! <laughs> I would feel positively about robbing a bank. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one, too. Have you noticed that this this actually kind of says a lot about the the way that the book went? The funny one, the funny quotes, all came from the first third of the book, because it slowly got more like terrible. Yeah, yeah. It's very good. All right. If you liked this, try this. What do you have to suggest today? Well, the one I was going to suggest, which is actually on my Amazon wish list, was stolen by someone. So instead, I'm going for something I bought two days ago. Fun. Fangirl. It's, it's, it's Fangirl, number one, um, by Rainbow Rowell, but it is the um, adapted version into the manga. It's cute. Ah. So... The adapter was Sam Maggs and Gabby Nam is the illustrator. So if you like the um, Simon Snow books, this is kind of like the prequel and they are very, very good. The latest one um, has just been released about two weeks ago. Any, anyway, the wind really. blows. Yeah, but two yeah. weeks ago it was released. So I haven't read it yet, but I'm very excited. The first two are very, very good. Are you thinking in future tense? Future conditional tense? As of time of recording, it was released two weeks ago. So as time of release, it was released last month. Mm, it makes my brain hurt. Yeah. Thinking about tenses, my brain hurts. Yep. Okay, Anywho. so talk about this book. 
yes, anywho, Fangirl, the manga. Um, some read from Goodreads. Kath is a Simon Snow fan. Okay, everyone is a Simon Snow fan. But for Kath, being a fan is her life. Kath's sister has mostly grown away from fandom, but Kath just can't let it go. Now that they're in college, Kath must decide if she's ready to start living her own life. But does she even want to if it means leaving Simon Snow behind? Kath doesn't need friends IRL. She has her twin sister, Ren, and she's a popular fanfic writer in the Simon Snow community with thousands of fans online. But now that she's in college, Kath is completely outside of her comfort zone. There are suddenly all of these new people in her life. She's got a surly roommate with a charming boyfriend, a writing professor who thinks fan fiction is the end of the civilised world, a handsome new writing partner, and she's barely heard from Ren all semester. Ah. There you go. Hmm. What so I'm sorry... I'm sorry that I apparently stole yours because just so everyone knows, I added mine before you added yours to our shared document, so I didn't know that I burgled it. It was an unintentional burgling. It's fine. I don't mind. As long as it gets recommended, it doesn't matter. Fine. Okay. So... I am recommending Lumberjanes, also by Noelle Stevenson. At Miss Quinzilla Thisquin, Penny Quee Quee Thistle Crumpets Camp for Hardcore Lady Types, <laughs> things are not what they seem. Three eyed foxes, secret caves, anagrams. Luckily, Joe, April, Mao, Molly, and Ripley are five rad butt-kicking best pals determined to have an awesome summer together. And they're not gonna let a magical quest or an array of supernatural critters get in their way. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, you know what's interesting? Your... Your... If you liked this, try this. Kind of has hints and you know feelings of the indie spotlight that i'm going to suggest this week Mm -hmm. and you know when you read the title you're gonna think what it doesn't go together but it's called sleeping around by morgan vega brand new debut author the summary is coralie Corey Reed can't wait to trade her current foster house for Harmony Hall, the dorm room for music majors. Corey arrives at Bourne's College with her pawn shop violin and a borrowed duffel bag, ready to leave her foster care baggage behind. But Corey's first day on campus starts on a sour note. She runs into her arch-rival violinist, Dylan Mason, and worst of all, Corey can't live at Harmony Hall. Period. Res Life shoves her into a temporary triple with two unsuspecting and beyond different roommates. When one of her roommates does the unforgivable, Corey starts sleeping around campus. Not the sleeping around you think, friends! She's sleeping on air mattresses and random couches while waiting for an open room. But how can she beat Dylan for first chair if she can't keep her eyes open? How can she pass her finals without a good night's sleep? Will college, the place she thought would launch her dreams of becoming a professional violinist, be the place her dreams end all too soon? This one just came out yesterday. Yesterday record... Future conditional tense. Right. Can we cover more graphic novels? I really enjoy them. Yeah, we can. We can cover more graphic novels. And ideally, I would like to actually do these indie spotlights eventually one day. Well, I think we did also suggest perhaps doing a month next year of pure indie spotlight. We did. We did. We really, we really did. We need to do it. We will. One day. One day. The schedule is packed at the moment, but if we it get is, it, if we so t- if we say right now, we will do it as a month theme. Find a debut author. 
find a new book, find an indie spotlight. We'll do it. We'll do it. We will. We'll do it really, really well. The first five week month of twenty twenty two. We'll do it then. We'll see. It's only twenty twenty one. We're not future conditional tensing that far out. No, but Yet. bear in mind this time last year we pretty much had everything plus then then some marked out. So it's just yeah. just for consideration. We'll put it on the list so we don't forget that it's an intention. And then yeah. from then we can turn it into whatever it needs to be. Exactly right. All right. That's it for this episode of Fictional Hangover. I'm Amanda. And I'm Claire. Join us next time as we discuss Dread Nation by Justina Ireland. Look out for our Would You Rather polls on social media. Don't forget about our book club and monthly challenges on Facebook. Be sure to visit our shop on Redbubble at fictionalhangover.redbubble.com for all your favorite fictional hangover-themed merchandise. And become a patron of ours on Patreon at patreon.com slash fictionalhangover. Until next time, remember, the only cure for a fictional hangover is another book. You can find us at fictionalhangover.com, follow us on Instagram at fictionalhangover, find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash fictionalhangover, and on Twitter at fictionalhangover, no E-R. If you'd like this episode, check out our others, a rate, review, and subscribe so you don't miss out. And finally, special thanks to Liz Emerson for our music. You can find her on Facebook and Patreon. Thanks for listening.